southwestern New Mexico, a rugged land, remote and mysterious. For centuries, men have searched its hidden valleys for treasure. Some have disappeared, lost forever, in search of the Valley of the Dead. Today we are journeying into the rugged Mogollon Mountains in southwestern New Mexico. Hey kids, join us in our search for the fabled lost Valley of the Dead. After many years of researching the original Spanish documents left by the Spanish conquistadores and early explorers in the 15th and 16th century, we have narrowed our search down to approximately a 50 mile square area of the Mogollon Mountains behind us. Any one of these valleys, and there are hundreds of them, could possibly contain the Valley of the Dead. It was an exhausted group of hikers who gratefully pitched camp at the end of the first day. We're now up in the Mogan mountain range. Forms a bowl around it here. And we've seen a lot of wildlife. Deer, elk, and horse. At the end of the third day's hike, we chanced upon a gold miner's cap. Strangers coming. Where? Over yonder. As darkness fell, they escorted us to the camp where we met the head miner, who they called Mr. Bones. Welcome, stranger. What brings you out here in the wilderness this late? What are you looking for? We're looking for the Valley of the Dead. You got any idea where that is? Valley of the Dead? Well, before I could give you information like that, we'll have to consult the bones. in trouble. Well, I know a couple of boys that'll take you out there. Name of Funky and Monkey. I'll take you over to their camp in the morning. Y'all can camp out over here for the evening. The next morning we awoke to the sound of hell falling on our tent. After breakfast, we visited the camp of our guides named Funky and Monkey. Hey, Mark, is that hail coming down? Yep, Dave, it's hail coming down. Mmm, shovel cuisine. Hey, Funky! Hey, Monkey! You in there? Yeah! I got a cash job for you. Really? Oh, yeah? Funky and Monkey guided us to the ruins of an old Spanish fort. Beyond the ruins lay the entrance to the Valley of the Dead. Did y'all spot anything up there? Can everybody see that? Wow, I wonder what that is. Hey, I think we got something over here. Check it out. It looks like a arm bone. 
Look at that. What do you see? What's this? What are you seeing? Oh, look at that. Where's that rag at? Where's that Let's rag go. at? Let's go. Okay, I got it racked up. Good to go. Let's get it into a path and let's get out of here before this thing caves in on us. Something's following behind us. Let's get out of here. Oh. <laughs> My bones, my game. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> the next morning, we left the Valley of the Dead forever to return to civilization. Civilization at last! There's the bridge! Yee-hoo! Bidding the Mogollon Mountains goodbye. We began our return journey to Laporte, Texas, where the noted forensic scientist Dr. Bernard Wiseman would study the artifacts we discovered and report his findings. Well, Doctor, you've had a few weeks to take a look at the artifacts we brought back out of the Gila country. Have you got anything to report to us yet? Yes, you have some fascinating items here. This appears to be an authentic Spanish helmet from about 500 years ago. I estimate that the head would have gone in this part. You have Spanish pieces of eight here, only I only see six. And we found those right next to the body. The body? The body that this belongs to? I would, I reckon so, Doc. I estimate this skull belonged to a male under the age of 18, probably close to the age of 10, based on the occipital suture along the backside, although you can call it the squiggly line thing. Now, uh, Professor, uh, what were the results of the uh, carbon dating? Oh, I'm not able to establish whether he was old enough to have dated anybody, but... You would ask me about girls. Judging from the, uh, the front parts where the eyeball thingies could go, I do not think he would ever have worn glasses, but he probably had blue eyes. Good set of teeth, and then some particularly icky stuff on the underside here. Well, in the future, I should warn you of the peril of disturbing an ancient burial chamber. I mean, an artifact like this may appear safe, but there is unseen danger. There may even lurk a remnant of its previous owner. What's this guy talking about? Were you talking about ghosts? Well, this is scientists. I don't like to use the term ghost. But uh, there are some things in this world that are better left a mystery. Professor, uh, what have we done? Yeah, man. Yeah. Not to worry, gentlemen. Ghosts need energy, too. I can assure you that any ghost as old as this skull can only be reanimated from an extremely powerful source. Ooh, I can't estimate... Only 1.2 gigawatts, to be precise. Gigawatts of what? Ooh, energy. Electrical. The source of some kind. So if we keep that thing away from electrical sources, then it it all be all everything will be just fun and right. Indeed. In fact, I'll have one of my students secure this in a safe place in the library until I can complete my research. Outstanding. Excellent. Well, Doc, I guess we'll be looking to see a report from you here pretty darn soon, right? Within the week. All right. We'll be expecting to see it there, gentlemen. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your discovery.